Breaking news, baby dolls. Not only are you my friend, but Bitcoin has touched $36,700. Wow, almost hitting 37K. Bitcoin on the Bybit exchange has absolutely destroyed shorts who were martingale shorting all the way up. Everybody had their stops placed at the same way because why? They are smelly. They poop in the woods. Bears rub their backs on the trees. Leave those trees alone, you smelly bears. We are bulls. Bulls go out into the paddock. We poop out in the open and we eat grass. This is what's been happening. Look at this giant wick. This is on Bybit. I want to show you right now. Other exchanges, though, have not had that big liquidation. This is all from leverage. Most of them are around $33,400. It's very funny. When you go back and you look at the big chart, you're like, oh, no, it's a rejection. But it's not. It's enormous. It's just a huge move. If we go back and look at the rest, Bitcoin has actually touched $34,100 at the top. This is fascinating. You know why it's fascinating? Not only do you like, subscribe, belly button, or in my recent video, I literally made a segment saying Bitcoin's going to $37,000. I didn't think it would go towards it in the next 55 minutes after release. Now, where I get $37,000 from? Well, what's happening is we are gravitating back towards the highest volume node, which is $37,000. So I'm actually going to show you right, right now. So this is, if you go to trading view, you can actually put on the volume nodes. Okay, it doesn't work right now. But if you're able to see the volume distribution, you'll see most of the volume was done at 37K. It's one of the highest points. So that's gravity. It's a magnet. Everybody's getting sucked into that because that's a break even for these people. That's why when we get there into the peanut brain zone, these people, they're going to look at it and they're going to go, you know what? I don't like crypto that much. I've uh, been in pain for too many years. I want to get out. That's why it's going to take some time to rinse through them. As a quick update as well, Pulse Chain is pumping. Pulse Chain is real DeFi, better than fake DeFi. We are now only around near 30% below day one sack. So it's fantastic to see this move. This is PLS. Also, PulseX is almost minus 80% below day one sack. We've got quite a while ago. If I change it to the log chart, it makes it look a bit differently. But yes, we've got quite some distance to cover for this ecosystem. PHEX and EHEX still doing fantastic. They are moving up in line. And I'm also going to show you this, the EHEX-PX ratio around 0.6. Everything seems to be perfectly going along. Combined HEX around 2.6 cents. It's fascinating to see that these things are moving. And also, if we go have a look, we're watching now Chainlink hitting. It was $10.80. I can see on my screen. I'm just going to show you what's going on in the land of Chainlink. Chain link around here. We're still waiting to see. Are we going to go back to the retracement zone? The retracement zone would be 50%. I drew this all the time for you, friends. Around 28 to 30 bucks. Are we going to head through there in the next burst up? It depends how much hope and disbelief we can tolerate. Eventually, we're going to hit a point where we all get hopeful too much, and then we stop and we go for another rinsing. We are in for probably another six months to go. Just want to remind you as well. So Richard Hart, I've got to tell you this, his post, okay? So as this is happening, we're enjoying all the green candles, pumping, everything's doing well. He says, I'm reading about how many lies everyone was telling you. Are you reading about how everyone you thought was straight up and actually crooked? So this is the industry. Everybody who we thought was a good guy is actually a bad guy. And the crypto industry who they think is a bad guy is actually a good guy. Richard Hart is making real DeFi stuff. The community is strong. He's done things right. He's done a lot of things right. And a lot of people still haven't woken up to it. This is not a cause to get frustrated, but it's a time to get hopeful. Why? Because it means they haven't priced it in. That's exactly what you want to see. If everybody was saying what you're in is the greatest thing ever, well, unfortunately, you're about to get wrecked because now you've run out of buyers. Look what else he says. I told you the truth while everyone else lied to you. Get your money off exchanges. Come and use real DeFi. So many of my inventions have performed flawlessly while others have failed. Look around. We won. Now, this is very strong language. So, obviously, not financial advice, but when the founder and the leader is being attacked by the corrupt SEC, goes silent, and then comes back saying we won twice, I think the market's being a bit unfair with his pricing right now. I think we should be a 2x from here. 
So if we get a 2x from here, it puts combined hex back to about 5 cents, which was where we were on the Pulse Chain launch. By the way, this is when combined hex launched June, but we actually launched Pulse Chain in May. And I think we're just going to keep going to go and reprice that. I think Pulse X, I know we had a lot of weak hands, man, but we shouldn't be down here. The buy and burn, friends. The buy and burn. I've got to remind you, it buys. It's not just burning. It buys. It's literally a drunk Michael Saylor. It's bought 500 billion Pulse X off the market so far. 2.5% of the supply, the circulating supply. Don't worry about the origin address. The origin address has not dumped Hex, so I'm going to assume it's not going to dump Pulse X. So I like to incorporate it from the circulating, the circulating supply only. This is fantastic to see because it means those people trading in their fees, it gets sucked off the market and it increases your share just by holding. So instead of paying you a dividend yield, you get paid by the protocol pushing up the price over time. It's just going to take longer because why? We need more months to pass. We need higher volume to get to get pushed through the system. Look at this. <coughs> Pulse Chain today has done $51 million of volume. It was doing 10 to $20 million at the low. So we need to see it keep going up, but the whole industry is going to keep going up. And of course, bizarre very bizarre. We are here to crank friends. Green everywhere. What is our next target though? If I had money to deploy, I would still go through Pulse, Pulse X, E hex, P hex. Maybe do a third pulse, a third pulse X, a third into the combined hex. Do what you want. The whole ecosystem is linked. There's nothing to be worried about in terms of like, is one thing going to catch up or isn't the other thing going to catch up? I really doubt any of them are going to be left behind. Having a quick look at the macro market. So as all of this is happening, so I just showed you Bitcoin's pumping, right? Isn't that fantastic to see? Bitcoin's pumping, but come and have a look at macro. Macro is risk off right now. Isn't that special? Right now, stocks moving down, gold moving up, US dollar, it's holding its highs. I'm wondering where crypto will go from here. Are we going to get scammed or will we pump? I made this post, by the way, before we actually did the move. We actually pumped upwards. You see how everybody short, they're getting too cocky now, you know, because they saw things go down for too long. That's what happens, right? That's how, that's how these stories are formed. You see things go down over and over and over again, and you think, okay, well, shorts keep getting rewarded because it keeps making a new bottom, new bottom, new bottom. So technically, friends, you know how hard it is to call the bottom, right? The exact price is very, very hard, and many people prematurely call it. So what that means is if you just keep getting short in a bear market, you just keep assuming, you know what? Statistically, it's impossible to call the bottom for most people, so I'm just going to stay short. And they kept getting rewarded, but eventually – the bottom is in and it keeps going up. And you are now what witnessing this. Bears are not capitulating yet. They want to see more. They're still not happy to get in. And you're probably going to find that they don't want to get in. Most of the bears, they do have a lot of options to make it back. They have a lot of altcoins in crypto that have real DeFi. So if I was on the sidelines right now, it's no brain. I'd buy Pulse Chain Ecosystem, real DeFi. I'd also buy Bug Eater DeFi Chainlink. There you go. Okay, that's your higher beta, uh, which is your higher multiplier on Ethereum and Bitcoin moving up eventually, and you're done. So if it's so simple, why don't they do it? Well, the mindset of somebody who stays short as this thing is happening, they don't really believe in crypto. They've got too much PTSD. Okay, they, they see things happening, but they're too scared to pull the trigger. I know, friends, the emotional pain that you go through when the candles go down you either go one of two ways. Either you click sell and you say, I never, ever want to participate in this ever again, and you stick to your guns, or you join the Copa crew, which is us. <laughs> we were just holding forever. Holding forever. That's all we can do. We don't have any other alternatives, do we? Just want to remind you as well, Michael Saylor now, on this pump, Michael Saylor is now officially like really back in the green. So his Bitcoin price, like 29,000-ish, was him putting it. Now we're at like 33,000. Wow, he's actually killing it. Remember, he's got like 157,000 Bitcoin. You can calculate his profit. If he's got 157,000 Bitcoin and he's made $4,000 per Bitcoin, he's up $628 million. Wow! I hope I've done the maths right here. This is nuts. If he's $4,000 in profit, 
from 29. So that's crazy. Remember, though, he went minus 1.8 billion down and it almost went to zero. So, <laughs> you know, it's just one thing to celebrate. So look at all these dots of DCA buying, though. All the dots here. That was his purchases. And you, you got to be careful, man. Look at this. Look at this. Just know, like, look at these. These are dangerous ones, man. This is really dangerous. I mean, even he's dangerous. But you can only say that in hindsight. Like, no one knew it was going to stop here. What if it kept going up? Then you'll say, oh, my gosh, luckily you got those bullets, isn't it? Just like here, okay, when we had to race this, focus on this. People were laughing at him here. They're laughing at him there. And I'm saying, okay, well, one day in the future, Bitcoin's 80K. You're going to say, oh, my gosh, those are the greatest buyers of a lifetime. Luckily, he got in. All right, so people only look and judge with hindsight. He's been DCAing for years now. He even bought the top on leverage. Like, got to be careful with that, man. When I'm going to make sure, friends, you know, it's when he's feel when you feel and I feel like it's time to leverage up. The thing is, it probably is the first time. It probably is when you feel like it's time to leverage up in that crypto cycle. It's you got a bit of time, but eventually you get yourself into a hole so big that you can't get yourself out of it. It's just very hard for somebody to say, okay, party's done, you know? So, but technically the person who never does leverage always out survives the person who does do leverage. It's, it's literally impossible to start doing it and then stop. I mean, look at this, DCA and buying Bitcoin. This is what you have to do. Also found this other picture, which is very funny. Look at this little soy pointer here. Michael Saylor being offside for a long time down here. I mean, it was nuts. I want to let you know too, you know why this was offside, friends? When you see this chart, you think, oh, I went down. No, no, no. Okay. This was brutal because we broke the 200-week moving average for Bitcoin. We had never done that before. Never before seen. This is the weekly chart of Bitcoin. And look at it right now. This is the 200-week. You see this? Not only did we go below it, like we really cracked below, like dangerously below when Michael Saylor was being asked about his offside positions up here, so around this zone, right? He was being asked and interviewed. He goes, Bitcoin's still above its 200-week moving average. You know, it's it's moving up on average every four years. But when you go down below it, it means, uh-oh, you are offside now from the average of four years. So this, it's showing you Bitcoin diminishing gains, friends, and starting to slow down. So you've got to learn from this. This is going to happen to many altcoins. This is going to happen to Ethereum. This is going to happen to every single crypto you can get your hands on. It's just that Bitcoin was first. So don't forget, these models and stuff that we invent, they're not perfect. They will eventually be broken. Especially, we saw this in the land of Hex, Pulse Chain Community Hex. When I posted this picture, the combined price was 2.1 cents. Right now, it's 2.6 cents. See, this log chart, I know it doesn't do it justice with the pain because you know that it's there's a long way to go, friends. I know, you know from 2.6 up to here, like, let's zoom in here. The average we've got to get to, look, we're right near the all-time median price for HEX, which is 2.85 cents, the all-time median. Remember, it's the point in the middle. The all-time average is 6.5 cents. So that's another 2.2x from here, which is fantastic that we're even getting towards it. But if you look at what happened in the bull market, I mean, from its all-time average, look at this. Hex stayed above its average for a long time. That's, look, I'm just going to teach you something. This is a bit of like insider friendship secret knowledge. If you see something traveling above its averages for a very long time, you got to be careful because when the music stops, and you don't know when it will, but when it does, it means it's going to be brutal. It's going to be very, very brutal. Because on average, this is how markets work. The elastic bands, you haven't rinsed enough weak hands out. Here's the thing. You don't rinse weak hands with price alone. You need price and time. You and I live in the third dimension. We live in the 3D world, okay? We are slaves to time. So that's the only way to rinse people out. I know it's really tough, but you, you're understanding it now. You saw, oh my gosh, the only way for us to get here is for 2022 to happen and the hope and disbelief rinsing of 2023. So you're understanding this now. And this was, isn't that exactly what happened? The vicious destruction below the averages for a long time. So now we know this, you know, having the all time average and the all time medium price, I think they're actually fantastic to plot. Don't forget, you're going to have friends and family. They're only going to discover the community 
is alive, they're going to discover it when it's too late. Pulse Chain community, we've kept all the receipts for the past two years. Oh, yes, a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of influences. I'm like, man, you are really going to regret talking smack. You are going to regret it, okay? There are so many people. You don't understand, friends. They're going to disappear. You know, you always probably wonder, how don't these people learn? You want to know why they don't learn? Because they're not here, man. They disappear when the candles go up. I told you, I made you many, many videos. You like, subscribe, belly button, I appreciate every single one of you. They actually go away. They're not here for the price go up part. Most of them disappear. Only the few of the people remaining, they basically, they cop it hard. They cop it like really hard. They cop it for all the people who left. So, you know, it's been two years, keeping receipts for two years. We're exiting the accumulation zone. You know, now obviously we're going to see some people, they're going to say this immediately. I've already seen it already in Telegram. They said, Top signal, you're all too excited. You're all too excited, euphoric, etc. Look, they have a point, but it could also be disbelief. You, you, you never really know these things. It's just like you think, look, man, it's been too long. It, it's been way too long. How do you know it's been too long? Because you feel it's been too long. You know, in 2022, when crypto was collapsing, nobody said it's been too long, right? We said the prices are too cheap. Do you understand the difference? Now it's been too long and the prices are too cheap. You need both conditions. You felt this. You felt this with all the altcoins and everything else going up. So time capitulation, this is just what it takes. It's very hard in markets because you don't know if your market. So let's, let's go into the future, friends. We don't know if on this monthly chart, are we going to get half a good market, half a bear market, Half a good market, half a bear market. You don't know that. Because at the first point here, half a good market or half a bull, you don't know if it's going to keep going up. So you just keep holding. But then it goes down. And guess what? All the weak hands who got out here, they're going to feel great. And then it's going to continue again. So, But it's also possible, it, instead of doing half a good market, it's like 3x a good market, straight, in, straight, in a, in, um, straight up. Right now, it doesn't mean maybe Bitcoin 300k. It just means you get up without having a more than like a 25% rinting. That's possible. Remember, we need that time. We need the time of the red candles. If you don't get that, you increase your risk that when you do turn, it's going to switch. You just don't know when it comes. That's why we've got to look for obvious signs of euphoria. But isn't it great? Bitcoin tapped 36,700 dollars. Now around 33k. We've now broken the zone. I've made many videos saying, hey, this is the zone. Everybody's like, whoop. Now it's time to start getting in. These are the early people going to get in. Hopefully altcoins continue. Let's see how we go into the Bitcoin halvening. Catch you in the next one, friends.